Shalom, brothers and sisters. Today's topic we're getting into is called servants versus enslaved servants. Bond men, bond maids, and bond servants. The definition between servants and slave are as follow. Servants are hired. Slaves are owned. Servants have an element of freedom in choosing whom they work for and what they do. Slaves do not. Example, in today's world, if you are an employer, your employees are your servants. If you are an employee, you are a servant. People that enlist in armed forces like Army, Air Force, Navy, Marines, and the National Guards of the government are bond servants. The government owns them. That is the difference between a servant and a bond servant or a slave. Bond servants are called slave. Anything in bond or bondage or slaves. Let's get into scripture reference of difference back to the beginning after the great flood. First, we're going to start off again with John 1 1. Then we will follow into Noah's boys, Japhet, Ham, and Shem after the great flood. Mighty God of High destroyed everything on the earth except those eight souls that were on the ark. And I was one Noah's wife on the ark. So let's get into John 1 1 first. We're going to read John 1 1 as it is, and then we're going to insert Mighty God of High's name into the scripture to get a better understanding who he is and who he was and who he is to come. John 1 1 of the King James Version Bible says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with Mighty God. And the word was mighty God. Now let's back that up, inserting mighty God Ahia's name and the Messiah, Yeshia, the son's name. In the beginning was the word, Messiah, Yeshia. And the word, Messiah, Yeshia, was with mighty God Ahia, I am that I am. And the word, Yeshia, Messiah, was mighty God Ahia, I am that I am. Now let's get back, let's go into... Noah's boys, Japheth, Ham, and Shem, we're going back to the beginning, the basics, those four, we talked about the four colors, the four primary colors, which are red, yellow, blue, and black. Again, all printers they make today have these four colors that make all colors we see around us, including the people. Again, Japheth was red. Ham was black, Shem was yellow, and Noah blue. Again, those four primary colors, red, yellow, blue, and black, make all the colors we see around us today. You can look at your printer. If you have printers in your home or printers online, you'll see those four cartridge colors, red, yellow, blue, and black. So let's get into the Hamites curse. Canaan slave or Canaan would be bond servants forever slaves forever starting with the book of Je asher chapter 7335 this says for ahia our mighty god gave ham the son of noah and his children and all his seed as slaves to the children of shem and to the children of japhet and unto their seed after them for slaves forever and why again ham which was the youngest son of noah saw his father nakedness and also Ham stole the land of Lebanon, which today is called Canaan, from Shem. Again, mighty God Ahia, who is the son Messiah Shia in the earth, is revealing his identity. He has revealed Satan identity. Satan tries to have a Godhead, the three, the three which was Donald Trump, the father, Sabrina Dowry, the son, and Whoever else the third one is, I don't know what he's doing, but Mighty God Ahia is Idris Elba in the flesh. Idris Elba is Mighty God Ahia, I am that I am, who knows the past, present, and future. Idris Elba is omnipotent, all-powerful, omniscient, knows all, and sees all, and omnipresent, present everywhere at all times. Again, we are all still inside Mighty God Ahia's body. And currently there are people 
out of order in his body. For again, people don't understand how mighty God higher word and mighty God higher or as one. Mighty God Ahaya made these human flesh to help us give an understanding of who he is. Again, the voice that I'm speaking is the spirit of me and my human flesh is me. So again, it's the spirit and the flesh. Mighty God Ahaya Adam and Mighty God Ahaya or identical. The son, S-O-N and Mighty God Ahaya or identical, as I mentioned before. So let's recap. One more again, before we get into scripture reference that cite the difference between a servant and a bond servant to get a better understanding of where we are today and what's happening. Again, Noah cursed Ham's son Canaan for looking at his nakedness on the ark. Noah was Idris Elba, Adrissa Akuna Elba. Idris Elba is mighty God, higher I am that I am in the flesh, omnipotent, all powerful, omnipresent, present everywhere at all times, and omniscientic, sees all, knows all, and in all. Idris Elba is the heavenly father that came in the flesh as the son, S-O-N, Messiah Yeshia, that was crucified on the cross. I am a witness. I am his wife, his queen, his twin, and his daughter. As I mentioned to you previously how that was. Idris Elkuna Elba is mighty God Ahaya. I am that I am again in the flesh as Yeshaya Messiah, the Savior, King, and Redeemer, the all-consuming fire. So now let's get into scripture reference that goes over the difference between a servant and bond servant and who will be slaves in the next kingdom to come, in the kingdom of heaven to come. Again, we're wrapping up the tree the knowledge of tree of good and evil the second phase of it and again jacob's plan who's actually david's plan are in effect cleaning up the mess that the wicked evil have done down here in the on earth as well as in heaven they tried to annihilate the holy seed from heavens and earth but it backfired on them and mighty god ahia is plucking them out of the heavens and earth and sending them back to the unquenchable lake of fire up in the S-U-N. As I mentioned previously, S-U-N and S-O-N, they were twins in one point of time. So let's get into the book of Jubilees, chapter 7, that says, And Ham saw Noah his father naked, and went forth and told his two brethren without. And Shem took his garment and arose. He and Japheth, and they placed the garment on their shoulders and went backward and covered the shame of their father, and their faces were backward. And Noah awoke from his sleep and knew all that his younger son had done unto him. And he cursed his son and said, Cursed be Canaan, Ham's youngest son, and enslaved servant shall he be unto his brethren. And he blessed Shem and said, Blessed be Ahiah El Elohi of Shem, and Canaan shall be his enslaved servant. Let's get into the King James Version Bible that goes over servants and bond servants. Starting with Jeremiah 2, 13 to 15, that says, For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hewed them out cisterns, broken cisterns, that can hold no water. Is Israel a servant? Is he a home-born slave? Why is he spoiled? says a high and mighty God, I am that I am. Galatians 4, 22 to 31, that says, For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bondmaid, the other by a free woman. But he who was of the bondwoman was born after the flesh, but he of the free woman was by the promise. Which things are an allegory, for these are the two covenants, the one from the Mount Sinai, which gather it to bondage, which is Hagar. For this Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia, and answer it to Jerusalem, which now is and is in bondage with her children. But Jerusalem, which is Israel, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. For it is written, Rejoice, thou barren that bearest not, Break forth and cry, Thou that travailest not, for the desolation had many more children than she which had an husband. 
Now, we brethren, as Isaac was or the children of the promise, but as then he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the spirit, even so it is now. Nevertheless, what saith the scripture? Cast out the bondwoman and her son, for the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. So then, brethren, we are not children of the bondwoman, but of the free. And we're going to stop there for a second. We're back. We're in Abraham and Sarah. Mighty God of High visited Abraham and gave him a promise that he would have an heir through Sarah. But Sarah lost her faith and thought that Mighty God of High meant Hagar, the bondservant, because she was old and barren. And so Sarah gave Hagar to her husband, Abraham, which are the Ishmaelites today in Jerusalem, which are in bondage. And they shall not be heirs with the children of Israel, which is Jerusalem, who is Sarah, the mother of us all. Sarah, which who is also Eve, which is also me in this dimension, Minette Michelle Davis Jackson, nicknamed Mickey. So let's get back into scripture reference, starting off with Genesis 21, 9 through 13, that goes over the story of Hagar and Sarah and Abraham. And Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, which she had borne unto Abraham, mocking. Wherefore she said unto Abraham, Cast out this bondwoman and her son, for the son of this bondwoman shall not be heir with my son, even with Isaac. And the thing was very grievous in Abraham's sight because of his son. And a high and mighty God I am that I am said unto Abraham, Let it not be grievous in thy sight because of the lad, and because of thy bondwoman. And all that Sarah had said unto thee, hearken unto her voice. For in Isaac shall thy seed be called. And also of the son of the bondwoman will I make a nation, because he is thy seed. I'm going to stop right there for a second. Mighty God Ahiah blessed Hagar's sons, Ishmael, but they were not of the promise. Mighty God Ahiah made the covenant with Abraham and Sarah for Isaac and not Ishmael. And again, the same thing followed through through Jacob with the 12 tribes of Israel, Jacob who was laid, later named Israel. The same thing happened with the tribe of Dan and with the other 11 tribes. So let's get back into Leviticus 25, 39 to 46 that says, And if thy brother that dwelleth by thee be waxen poor, and he be sold unto thee, thou shalt not compel him to serve as a bond servant, but as an hired servant and as a sojourner. He shall be with thee, and shall serve thee unto the year of Jubilee, which are fifty years. And then shall he depart from thee, both he and his children with him, and shall return unto his own family, and unto the possession of his father shall he return. For they are my servants, says a high and mighty God, which I brought forth out of the land of Egypt. They shall not be sold as bondmen. Again, for they are my servants, which I, I am mighty God, I am that I am, brought forth out of the land of Egypt. They shall not be sold as bondmen. Thou shalt not rule over him with rigor, but shall fear thy mighty God, I am that I am. Both thy bondmen and thy bondmaids, which thou shalt have, shall be of the heathen that are round about you. Of them shall you buy bondmen and bondmaids. Moreover, of the children of strangers that do sojourn among you, of them shall you buy, and of their families that are with you, which they begat in your land, and they shall be your possession. And you shall take them as an inheritance of for your children after you, to inherit them for a possession. They shall be your bondmen forever. But over your brethren, the children of Israel, you shall not rule over one over another with rigor. 
Leviticus 26, 11 through 17. Again, and I set my tabernacle among you, says a high and mighty God, I am that I am. And my soul shall not abhor you. And again, mighty God, us tabernacle is the human flesh, the bodies. Mighty God, Ahia, who in this dimension is Idris Elba, made humans. And he made the heavens and the earth. So get back into scripture. Mighty, uh, uh, Leviticus 11 through 7. I'm sorry, Leviticus 26, 11 through 17. Again, that says, And I, Ahia, mighty God, I am that I am, set my tabernacle among you, and my soul shall not abhor you. And I will walk among you and will be your mighty God, and you shall be my people. I am Ahia, I am that I am your mighty God, which brought you forth out of the land of Egypt, that you should not be their bondmen. And I have broken the bands of your yoke and made you go upright. But if you will not hearken unto me and will not do all these commandments, and if you shall despise my statutes, or if your soul abhor my judgments, so that you will not do all my commandments, but that you break my covenant, I also will do this unto you. I will even appoint over you terror, consumption, and the burning of you, that shall consume the eyes and cause sorrow of heart, and you shall sow your seed in vain, for your enemies shall eat it. And I will set my face against you, and you shall be slain before your enemies. They that hate you shall reign over you, and you shall flee when none pursueth you. I'm going to pause her for a second. So again, Medigadahiah is telling us that after he freed us from Egypt, I was one over in Egypt in bondage. And when he did free us, he did allow us to take the possessions of the Egyptians with us. They stripped that place bare, and I was witness of that. And mighty God Ahia is saying, if, you know, we don't obey his commandments, his 11 commandments, which the 11th one is to love mighty God Ahia, I am that I am with our whole hearts, mind, and spirit. His 10 commandments are still intact. He first wrote them on stone and gave it to Moses. I was Moses. I went up on the holy mount and he gave them to me. He taught me the 10 commandments to teach the children of Israel. But they kept sinning and broke those commandments. So now mighty God Ahia made a new covenant. He wrote the laws in our minds and in our hearts. So I want to continue on with Revelations 2. Not, sorry, I'm going too fast. Let me slow down. I'm kind of excited, guys. Revelations 2, verse 9, it says, I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. Mighty God Ahia is talking to Judah and Israel. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Again, those people over in Jerusalem are Ishmaelites, or Hagar's descendants. And they are the synagogues of Satan. They are not of the promise. They are of the bondwoman, the Egyptian Hagar, on Mount Sinai. And if you look at the word Sinai real close, S-I-N, sin, A-I, is saying I see a sin. So again, Satan confused a lot of words and he confused many of Mighty God Ahia's scripture. But Mighty God Ahia again wrote his word in our minds and our heart. And when we see something that's out of order, Mighty God Ahia, Holy Spirit within us will point us into the truth. And again, he's blessing us, the peculiar people, his priesthood. When we find these errors and reproof and correct them internally, he blessing us with our blessings. So Revelations 3, 9, it says, Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. Revelation 18, 1 through 13 says, and after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk up the wine of the wrath of her fornication. 
and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth are waxen rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins, and that you receive not of her plagues. I'm going to pause there for a second. When the high and mighty God is saying, Come out of her, he means come out of those churches, come out of those, those false prophets still prophesying in white Jesus' name. Mighty God Ahia revealed his identity. He revealed white Jesus, who was Lucifer, Satan, who wanted to be Mighty God Ahia, I am that I am. Lucifer, who was the white fallen cherub, whitewashed everything. They, Lucifer, Esau, Japheth's descendants, they whitewashed many of our black history to white images, exalting themselves above the rest. When the white people, Lucifer, Satan see or the least in the kingdom of heaven. So continuing on with verse 5 of Revelation 18, it says, For her sins have reached into heaven, and mighty God Ahia, I am that I am, have remembered her iniquities, her sins. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her, double according to her works. And the cup which she had filled, filled to her double. How much she had glorified herself, and in lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her. For she said in her heart, I sit a queen, and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning, and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire. For strong is a high and mighty God I am that I am, who judgeth her. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and live deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning. Standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, the mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. And the merchant of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth her merchandise any more. The merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones and of pearls and fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet and all thyme and wood and all manner vessels of ivory and all manner vessels of most precious wood and of brass and iron and marble and cinnamon and orders and ointments and frankincense and wine and oil and fine flour and wheat, and beast, and sheep, and horses, and chariots, and slaves, and souls of men. So I just briefly wanted to cover that, the difference between a slave and a servant. And I want to thank you for listening. And again, as Mighty God Ahia give me information to give to you, I record them and post them for you. And I want to thank you for listening. Shalom.